ओके गुड मॉर्निंग मॉर्निंग एंड वेलकम गुड टू बी बैक टू लर्न अबाउट प्रेयर वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सब्जेक्ट सो वील प्रे एंड देन वी विल गेट इन टू आर टीचिंग डिस्कशंस एंड ऑल दैट सो हु वुड लाइक टू प्रे टूडे समबडी कैन लीड इन प्रेयर हु वुड लाइक टू प्रे Okay, just pass the mic, please. Pass it to Sabita. Yeah. Let's be prayer. Oh, hello, Father. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for this day and this time and this our new life. I surrender for us. Please guide guide with us, God. How can we give all us on such a time? Now I study, and I study for men. How can this do us evil and goodness? Give your knowing power. How can we understand with all us in studying prayer and intercession subject? I study for your name in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, so um, we will get back into our uh, notes. and we have talked so far about how to pray a prayer which is effective how to pray a prayer that god hears uh, in line with the word of god so that's what we talked about we looked at the life of jesus and said that um, jesus uh, gave us the pattern for a uh, a strong prayer life because if the son of god had a strong prayer life uh, we we are just you know uh, human beings created in the uh, image of god so how much more we need to have that kind of a prayer life to have a fellowship with god so uh, all that we have seen and we saw some common questions why our prayers don't get answered uh, and today we will go to the uh, prayer that jesus taught us so the disciples when they wanted to learn about prayer they went to jesus and asked him you know uh, master teach us how to pray and jesus gave them a pattern so i'm sure you all are familiar uh what which prayer will we talk about the lord's prayer correct it's um it's known as commonly known as the lord's prayer so we have the lord's prayer in matthew chapter 6 verses 9 through 13 so if you would like to turn to it in your bibles you can matthew 6 to 13 and uh, maybe one of us can read the whole um section and then we will start explaining what it means yes uh, matthew 6 9 to 13 full this then is how you should pray Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive other people, when they sin against you your heavenly father will also forgive you yeah and after that verse 13 just read the full but if you do not forgive others their sins your father will not forgive your sin okay and then when when you fast do not look somber as the hypocrites do for they disfigure their face to show others they are fasting truly i tell you they have received their reward in full but when you fast put oil on your head and wash your face okay non so that non sick yeah thank you uh, so that's fine you've completed like you've read the whole entire passage but one line went missing i don't know why uh, it says in the end for yours is the kingdom the power and the glory forever amen so uh, that one line got skipped it's not there in your translation okay okay fine uh, okay let's just um, uh, go through verse by verse now we've seen what the lord's prayer is now before we get into understanding what the lord's prayer is i told all of us that the disciples of jesus right 
they observe the life of Jesus. And uh, when you look at the Jewish culture, a disciple means somebody who follows the life of the master or the teacher. So it's today, the kind of uh, teaching we have is people come, they learn and they go back. Uh, however, in the Jewish culture, what we observe is that people would really try to pattern their lives after the life of the teacher. So that was true discipleship. So that is what the disciples were of Jesus. So uh, the disciples of Jesus, they saw the life of Jesus and they could have asked him any question, isn't it? Uh, how do you teach so well or, um, um, you know, what else? How do you do ministry so well? These are all questions that they could have asked Jesus. But the main question which they asked him is, teach us how to pray. So what does it tell us about Jesus and his life? They could have asked him any question. But the question that they asked Jesus is, teach us how to pray. So what does this tell us about the life of Jesus? Man of prayer, correct. Okay, man of prayer, which means that every single day the disciples must have observed, isn't it? See, it's one thing for Jesus to say, Okay, all of you come, I'll take a class, I'll teach you how to pray. There is value in that, but uh, what is happening here is the disciples have observed the life of Jesus and they are asking Jesus, Because you're so good at prayer, because you're praying all the time. Because your relationship with the Father is so strong. Please teach us how to pray. Please teach us how to be like you in the area of prayer. So it's a big thing for us to recognize. That in itself is huge. That Jesus was a man of prayer. So no wonder people are asking him to teach them how to pray. So then when they asked Jesus the question, he gave this answer. He said... Pray like this, in this manner, therefore pray. Okay, how to pray? He goes on. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Uh, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So Jesus told them, okay, you pray like this. And he gave some, um, you know, some uh, key points for prayer. Otherwise, the disciples might have wondered, Jesus is sitting one hour, two hours, whole night. What is talking to the father? What are the things that he's discussing with the father? So Jesus gave them some points some uh, focus areas and said, you pray like this. And he described it. Now, my question to you is, we all know the Lord's Prayer, right? Hopefully by heart. All of us know by heart. Okay. So uh, we say the Lord's Prayer. We just say in different languages, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be on it. So we just say the whole thing. Is that enough? Is that enough to just say the Lord's Prayer? Because we know it, Jesus said, pray like this. We know the prayer, we pray it, finished. Is that correct? Or is there anything more to that? No, sister. No, sister. Huh? It's already? It's only the pattern. Okay, very good. So it is only the pattern, which means that what Jesus is saying is, He's not saying, repeat after me. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Like You just go on, right? Sometimes we don't even think. We just say it one time, twice, thrice, ten times. And we feel like, okay, this is the prayer which Jesus taught us. We can just pray it and we can receive the answers. But where is the faith? Where is the, uh, you know, uh, where is... Sometimes our will is also not involved because we're not even thinking about the prayer which we are praying. So that's not the right way to just repeat the Lord's prayer or any other prayer also for that matter because that was not the intention of Jesus. 
what Jesus wanted us to understand is that this is a pattern. Okay? <coughs> and the pattern simply means that according to these points, I can pray. I can pray every day. Now, again, pattern doesn't mean only these points um, are everything. More than this, also we can pray. But some basic pattern Jesus gave us. So, let us see what he was trying to communicate to us through this pattern. So, in the first line, he said, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. That in itself is very powerful because till that time, the people, the Jews, the way they knew um, God was quite different. So they used to go to the temple, make the sacrifices. Uh, they were in awe or reverence, fear of Almighty God because um, they knew how God led them out of Egypt, how God did mighty miracles, you know, uh, through the Uh, history and even in the temple the ark of the covenant and this is teaching the disciples to pray how should we call god what should we address god our father Okay. So that is the beginning of prayer, relationship. Without relationship, how do we um, even relate to God? Isn't it? So begin by acknowledging the relationship which we have with God, our Father, our Father in heaven. Okay. So our Father in heaven refers to uh, the first person of the Godhead. So we know God is three persons in one, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So Jesus is teaching us to pray to who? Pray to? Pray to whom? Father, right? So our Father in heaven. And then he goes on to say, Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name means that um, we adore God. Hallowed is we we exalt God, we magnify God, we lift up the name of God. Okay? So uh, when we sit to pray, just think of it like this maybe. Uh, if you have, let's say, 50 minutes of prayer, the first 10 minutes, you can use the first point. What is that? You're acknowledging your relationship with the Father. And then you are praising God, you're worshipping God. So 10 minutes, what are you doing? Just praying along this line. So even if we don't know how to pray, just use the Lord's Prayer pattern. First 10 minutes spend in worshipping God. First 10 minutes spend in thanking God, adoring God. Right. So that is how we do um, the first section of what Jesus taught us. Now moving on to the second section here in verse um, 9, okay, 10. He says, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So, what does this mean? Remember, we talked about authority. We can release authority through prayer. What did Jesus say? I have given you the keys of the kingdom. Meaning, I have given you the authority of the kingdom. You can bind on earth. right? You can bind, you can lose on earth, which simply means... All of us as believers are carrying some authority. We have to release that authority. Right? Uh, now, we will bind the things on earth which are not um, according to God's purposes. So, things like, okay, what will we want to bind? We will want to bind uh, all evil. Okay, evil, any work of um, evil spirits, um, anger, um, hatred, bitterness, disobedience, right? These are all things of the flesh. So we want to bind these things. But what are the things we want to release or lose? 
things of the kingdom things like love joy peace righteousness purity holiness these are all things that we must release right so now what do we do uh, we must pray in such a way that we are binding the things which are not of god and then we are releasing the things which are of god now jesus said pray like this your kingdom come so where is the kingdom of god established um 100% without any interference right now you can be louder heaven okay great that's right because uh, who is the king in heaven god is the king okay and you can you can look at it this way the picture of heaven so god is ruling and reigning in heaven okay there are um, uh, all the hosts of heaven and the environment of heaven uh, and the bible teaches us a few things about heaven how in heaven there is always peace there's joy there are no tears okay seems like a beautiful place isn't it so it's a wonderful place where the will of god is um, accomplished 100% so it's a beautiful place now when jesus is teaching us to pray thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven what is the meaning of that the kind of environment which is in heaven we are using our authority to say lord let it be done on earth okay that's very powerful because jesus is telling us you can pray the kingdom of heaven on earth so all the things which are of evil those things can be uprooted removed and the things of god can be established okay so that is how we must pray when we uh, spend time with the lord so initially maybe when we start the prayer we are thanking god we are uh, acknowledging him as our father and everything then you go on to praying lord you rule and reign on the earth the way you rule and reign in heaven so uh, god does rule and reign on earth but do you remember we said god has given the earth to the sons of men so we are responsible for what is going on in the earth right now and that is why even though god is in charge um, in the in the broad sense we are the stewards of the earth and so our authority matters what we speak matters right so we say lord let your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven so when we do that we will see that the earth or our circumstances become more and more the like how it is supposed to be in heaven so on earth what is the problem like in heaven god rules and reigns okay and it's perfect but on earth what are what are the challenges what do we have as a problem why is it not perfect like heaven why do we have traffic jam and pollution and all these things why we are in the natural realm sister we live in a natural realm okay okay that's true because of us our poor stewardship poor, we didn't manage things well handle things well that's true anything else any other major issues why because of the government okay we don't want to blame any government over here fine um spiritual reason give me a spiritual reason i should be more specific when i ask a question very good this is the natural realm we have an enemy the bible says right you don't war against mm. flesh and blood but against principalities powers the spirits of wickedness so there is satan and his demons who are also opposing uh, what god intended for the world that is why uh, we have interference in heaven satan cannot interfere he can't go there but on earth he's interfering and not just that when adam and eve sinned what happened god created the world perfect right so everything should be perfect then what happened why is it not perfect 
Sister creation fell. We had the fall of the Satan creation. Satan one, one answer, Satan. Correct. Fine. What is the other answer? Hmm. Hmm. Okay. We have the interference of Satan. Okay. He uh, plays with our minds. All his games, right? Temptation, accusation, so many things he does. Fine. Accept it. What is the second reason I'm saying? Hmm? Adam? Open. Disobeyed. Correct. So Adam disobeyed. That, that is correct. What happened as a result? Huh, he gave authority to <coughs> Satan. Fine. So then there is, again, same thing, interference of Satan. So there is a second reason. Okay, I, I'll tell you. I'm just looking here at the Kar, uh, Kar. comments of online Kar. students. And uh, Charles, okay, Charles um, stated something. I, I'm guessing it's not in line with the question that I'm asking right now. But uh, uh, Sanjay and Gertrude are saying, fallen world or creation fell that is correct okay so the second reason is uh, if you look at like romans 8 and verse 21 it says that this earth too is now subject to corruption meaning whatever was meant to be perfect it's no longer perfect because sin has affected everything Sin has affected everything. Sin has affected health, nature, um, you know, like absolutely everything here in the world. That's why things tend towards destruction and, you know, decay and all that. But in God's perfect world, that was not God's intention. But after Adam and Eve sinned, see, that's the problem with sin. Now we ask a question, Adam and Eve disobeyed once. God, only one mistake. You threw them out. What is this? You know, you shut the, the access to uh, the garden and um, the earth was corrupted. Why, God? Only one mistake they did, no? You told them, don't eat from uh, the you know tree of good and evil. They went and ate. Why did God treat them like that? Why did the world get corrupted? For oh, one mistake. Any idea? And we are saying the world is corrupted now. The earth is corrupted. You know, nothing is perfect anymore. Satan is interfering. So much has gone wrong. For one mistake? What is the reason? Yeah? Yeah, disobeying, but only one no, Danny. That's right. So, see, we have to understand the nature of God. Okay, God is holy. So holy that even the slightest transgression, slightly missing the mark, is good enough to be um, like you're just out of his plan. That's why. The Bible says he's a righteous God. He wants us to be righteous. It's not about how big, how small. All that didn't matter. God is a holy God. And they did something against the holiness of God. That's the problem. Okay, that's the way we look at it. So that was good enough. They, they uh, disobeyed and went against the holiness of God. And uh, God had to do justice. What if God said, okay, no problem, you know, it's okay, you can be here, it's, it's all fine. Where is justice? What is right and wrong? God is also God of justice. So he had to take action. He did it, right? But we say, okay, what about God's compassion? Yeah, God is also compassionate. That's why he thought of Jesus. He did the just thing, but he gave an option. He said, okay, fine. Let us send Jesus and Jesus will redeem the world back into the perfection that the world was intended, uh, designed to be in. 
you got it so just some core concepts so i, I know it's not exactly your prayer notes but uh, i'm just sharing so that we can understand okay so the earth got corrupted and now god is giving us an opportunity this is also this prayer is also um, a, a redemptive redemptive um, um, action of god where god says yes i know the earth is corrupted i know satan is interfering but you have the power you pray your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven meaning we don't want sickness we don't want um, quarrels we don't want the works of the flesh we don't want immorality um, you know unholiness we don't want all these things let your kingdom come just the way heaven is pure um, and powerful we want our world to be like that so this prayer your kingdom come you know we can spend uh, many minutes even hours praying just this one line your kingdom come how you can just pray and say lord let your kingdom come in my mind you know in in our mind we think all kinds of unnecessary things it's not godly we need to have a renewed mind think the way the word of god guides us right sometimes our mind is like we don't listen to the holy spirit we don't listen to the prompting of his uh, voice we are listening to all kinds of other things our own thoughts are running isn't it so we, we can say lord let your kingdom come in my mind lord help me to focus according to your word now you can even pray and say uh, when you say your kingdom you can say god let your rule reign dominion authority let it all come in my mind uh, we can say something like lord let your kingdom let your rule your authority let it come in my life isn't it so you can think of all the areas of your life and just begin to pray the same prayer uh, you can even say lord let your authority come in my spiritual life in in everything that i do my worship my reading of of the word walking with you making decisions with you lord help me let your kingdom come lord let your will be done isn't it in my life so start to pray like that and say god i want your kingdom in my life in my spiritual life we can um, even pray this for um, our health we can pray for our finances isn't it we can pray for our ministry we can even pray for our family and say god on earth as it is in heaven how is it in heaven i want like that in my family lord you can even pray for the church and say god let my church be uh, such that the way heaven is let my church be like that let your kingdom come you rule you reign you have dominion you have authority so we are inviting god into every area of our lives and we are saying god you should rule not my own thoughts or satan you know his suggestions uh, in in my mind or anything that the enemy is doing let it not rule but you rule and reign so this way we can pray for so much we can you know pray for um, let's say uh, those who are married you can pray for your spouse you can uh, pray for your children right you can just pray for them and say lord you rule and reign in their life you rule and reign in the child's life okay let nothing else rule and reign no evil let it not rule and reign but you rule and reign let your kingdom come so in this way we can spend some amount of time just inviting the kingdom of god and even when we pray for the city or the nation it's a valid prayer that's what jesus was saying he was saying use your authority invite the kingdom into every area of your personal life and also the church also the city the nation you know every everything that comes to your mind you can pray this prayer lord let your kingdom come is that okay everyone are you are you good with that then we can move on okay sure so that was the second line and uh, we can now look at the next line where in matthew 6:11 um jesus said pray give us this day our daily bread so what does this mean
Correct. Okay, so it simply means our specific needs. All of us have needs uh, in our everyday life. It could be needs with regard to, um, you know, our uh, health or our family, our personal life. So if there are needs, it's not like God is saying uh, you should only have a spiritual prayer. No, how come you're asking for um, other things? Like, God, I don't have a place to stay. Give me a place to stay. God is not going to rebuke us, to be honest, about our needs. So if we have a need, it can be anything. It can be, uh, you know, a material need or it can be some other form of need. We can place it before God. And that's what Jesus is saying. He's saying, and in fact, he's even saying, give us this day our daily bread, which means that um, day to day we have needs. And sometimes our needs may change. Right? What I needed yesterday may be different from what I need today. But what is the um, comforting thought here that God is willing to provide for our daily needs? Because he knows that we are in need of things. We are in need of um, uh, you know, his um, blessings in our lives. So we can take some time to pray each day for our needs or we may even know the needs of others people share with us uh, some of the things that they need so keep that in prayer and begin to pray for others as well so that's what this next line means when we ask god for our daily bread so it's not that only i have to pray for my food and that's it okay so it's more than food daily needs is what jesus is referring to going on <coughs> To the next point here, where in verse 12, um, he is taught us to pray, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. So, uh, you know, the Lord's Prayer, it really helps us understand uh, how God is thinking. First, he said, our Father, which means the first relationship that we must be concerned about is who? God. So, our Father in heaven. Okay, and then we begin the prayer like that. But even earthly relationships are important. So that is why one of the things that Jesus taught us to pray is to make our earthly relationships right. So he is asking us to pray in this way. Um, forgive us our debts. And that simply means if in our relationships with people, now people may mean our family, people may mean our friends, uh, may mean those who we work with, right? Uh, we, must, we must treat people right. So if we don't do that, and somewhere in our hearts, we are convicted that I did something wrong, or I, I was not, um, you know, behaving right with this person or something that is hurting you in your heart. And it always happens when we sit to pray, that reminder comes, isn't it? We recognize that there are matters that need to be taken up to God and must be addressed. So uh, we must bring it before the Lord and ask for forgiveness. Uh, I, I've dealt with this earlier that you know we really have to, um, um, when we pray in this way, after dealing with those issues, then we can pray with a clear heart. So we must ask God for forgiveness. But notice how there is one more thing that is pointed out here. One is that I'm asking God for forgiveness. But the second thing is, I should also forgive others. Okay, so when we come to this portion of the prayer, God may bring to our mind some people who were... Um, who did wrong to us okay uh, so are we in a place in our hearts where we have released them we have forgiven them now if forgiving other people is not important then why will Jesus uh, teach us to pray like this it's very important for an effective prayer you understand so uh, God forgive me what mistakes I have made, but he also has included, as I forgive those who have wronged me. Now, 
imagine we are telling god god you forgive me forgive me i'm not going to forgive anybody they deserve it that's not correct we are not praying according to the to the uh, lord's prayer it has to be both ways god is saying okay i'll forgive you but you better forgive those who have wronged you so every day to go through this prayer will help us deal with the issues even in our relationships on a day to day basis right day to day or if you sit in prayer for more than once a day then more than once you're dealing with these matters because every day we are interacting with people something is happening something somebody said somebody did but you can deal with it and keep your heart clear keep your heart pure okay so forgiveness is very very important uh now forgiveness is another a uh, huge subject and there are lots of questions about forgiveness but we won't deal with that right now uh, just for us to know that our heart has to be clear before god that i must ask god i must say sorry for the things that i did wrong and then i must also forgive others um, and uh, you know not treat them with with a um, grudge or anything now moving on to the next section here verse 13 uh, jesus told us to pray do not lead us into temptation but deliver us from evil one so uh, basically this is a prayer asking god for protection okay protection from the uh, promptings of the devil uh, now we will study this later uh, i think in another course uh, about satan and all the things that satan does but to put it in a nutshell in a summary his main task is to uh, play with our mind to play with our thoughts okay if we are not careful enough uh, if we are not alert enough okay so that's the best way in which he tries to defeat the believer uh, by speaking lies into the minds of the believers accusing them tempting them right um, and uh, suggesting evil thoughts lust so many things he'll put into our mind now if the believer is not strong in the word and if the believer is not strong in the spirit what happens they will go with the suggestions of the enemy but if we are strong in the word if we are strong in the work of the spirit let him do whatever he wants to do we can find out hey that thought that's not me that's not god that's the devil i rebuke you in the name of jesus right so you can keep the devil away uh, and uh, not let him he will tempt us we can't stop that but overcoming temptation that is up to us right so now what jesus is saying is we can pray and ask god for protection god i'm asking for protection let me not be tempted and we know our weaknesses best isn't it each one of us we know our weaknesses we may be strong in many things but we may have certain weaknesses so now it is my responsibility when i pray to go to god and say god um you know these areas i am struggling i want you to help me protect help me guard my mind i don't want to give in to the temptation of the devil right so praying honestly before god for protection and guarding of the mind is what jesus is actually teaching here uh, and so in our thoughts in our imaginations okay our desires affections these are all the areas where he can play he can play with us but we must not let him do that and one uh, important thing to do is to pray and say god uh, i remember we learned that word consecrate consecrate meaning dedicate so you can just pray a prayer like god i dedicate my thoughts my imaginations my affections my desires right my plans god i give everything to you let not the enemy tempt me let him never be successful in tempting me to go away from the purposes of god for my life okay so pray in this way pray protection pray uh, for god to guard us and finally you know in uh, uh, the end we also see god jesus teaching us to say yours is the kingdom 
the power and the glory forever amen so you remember how we started the lord's prayer what did we pray first our father who art in heaven then hallowed be your name where we said we can worship god we can bless god we can honor god right how are we closing the prayer same right yours is the kingdom the power and the glory so we are giving god the rightful place in our lives okay we are uh, expressing our dependence on god so that's the way to even close off the prayer uh, so you know i like to look at think of it something like a sandwich you have in a sandwich uh, if you have all noticed you have like a piece of bread uh, on top a piece of bread below and you have like whatever fillings you want in between right so very similar when you pray you start the prayer with thanksgiving close the prayer with thanksgiving in between you know you have your all your other prayers where you're asking god lord let your kingdom come forgiveness i am forgiving others meet my needs so on and so forth so it's just a pattern that jesus gave us and we can apply this pattern every day if you do if we don't know how to pray you know some people say uh what is there to pray you know 10 minutes i can pray whatever i want 10 minutes i can finish my prayer what is there to pray for one hour or um, uh, some sometimes you know i've read uh, i particularly uh, one particular man of god i read that when he started praying he used to feel very bored so he he used to go into one corner uh, and then start praying but every few minutes he look at the clock how much time how much more time is left oh only 5 minutes okay pray some more then again look at the time it's only 10 minutes okay pray some more the time felt so long to pray fine but you see when we use this as a pattern take a book write down all the points the different points it's very helpful that's why sometimes prayer points are helpful because you can spend that time praying for all those prayer points and address all those things in our prayer time so uh in the beginning it may be hard but as we start practicing right i'm sure all of us will desire many hours in prayer and we will be like oh time is not enough to pray that's why maybe jesus prayed the whole night jesus prayed all the time because he loved praying it's possible to develop a prayer life like that where we can really enjoy the presence of god and bring everything which is in our hearts to the lord okay so this is about the pattern of the lord's prayer which we can all apply okay whenever i see vicky's message sorry huh? because he's supposed to be here but today also he's online okay vicky is that a question he was the freedom and knowledge include okay so now he was answering the question about um, uh, i asked you why why is there why is the world not perfect so for that okay fine uh, any other questions any other comments before we close the session now? about the pattern of prayer that jesus taught us ha huh, yes elson uh sorry can you come again please ha huh? hmm okay little more explanation okay um, nelson wants more explanation for lead us not into temptation i know it sounds like you know god is leading us into temptation but whenever we say something like that we should have other scriptures to back us up so if you study the book of james James tells us God does not tempt us. We fall into temptation because of our own desires. God doesn't tempt us. So, even though this line sounds like God is leading us into temptation, that's not true. The interpretation, right? God is not leading us. Satan tempts us. Okay? But we can pray for protection. Is that clear, Nelson? God is not tempting us. Satan is tempting us, uh, and we must pray for protection okay. now in life 
there can be times that god may um god may uh, let us walk through some tests but test is different from temptation god does not tempt us but there can be some tests that we walk through that god actually allows those tests to happen why because if we go through the test in the right way we will come out stronger so god wants to promote us that's why the tests happen but test is different from temptation god will never tempt us who will tempt us satan satan is the tempter yeah uh, good question elson thanks yeah and anything else No question. Okay, fine. Then uh, let's take a break. We'll come back in ten minutes and get into the next chapter. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. God bless.